So, Hannah, thank you uh, so much for being with us for this interview about etching. Thank you. Um, so let's start talking about the movie genre um, because, of course, I've seen the movie. We, I loved it a lot, but it has a um, mixture of subgenre. It is horror, of course. It is drama, but it has inside some little elements like coming of age, a bit of body horror, a bit of creature feature. So I just wonder which one, which trait is the most predominant in your opinion? Is it more horror? Is it more body horror? Well, um, yeah, that is a good question. Uh, yeah, I would hesitate to choose, but but it's it. You can say it's a horror film, but I really wanted it to make it as a, a film that uh, that the horror is there only to tell the story so it, the drama is in the center of everything and it tells about a young girl who feels that she's never fully accepted or loved as she is by her mother and I think that is horrifying and therefore the horror genre is there to tell this kind of horrifying story of not being loved as you are. Yeah is it maybe uh, a little bit of folk horror inside maybe some legend or something about like you know the crow which makes his appearance <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah, yeah it, it's the story is not it's not based on any folklore story it really started from one sentence from our screenwriter Ilya Rautsi who told me that he got this one idea that a boy hatches a double ganger out of an egg and that is all he knows and I thought that that is so interesting story that I want to start developing that but I want to change the lead character into a girl because I want to see more stories about women and girls so basically that one sentence was the starting point of the whole story oh uh, yeah speaking of girl power because of course the the, the main characters the, the cast is mostly uh led by women. So we have the uh, main character, Tinia, uh, we have the mother, they are the, the, the central protagonist of the, of the movie. Of course, we have the female movie director, which is great too. And there is also another character, but I don't want to make any strong spoiler. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they're going to be mostly, mostly female. So um, this is very nice. So this is like you wanted it to be about uh, the female dimension, not only motherhood, but also female figures. Yes, I, I did want, and, uh, and also since the theme of the film is that the main character is not accepted as she is. So I think that also relates to our society uh, in a bigger scale, because I think many women feel that they are never quite enough, or they are required to do a little bit more in order to be accepted, or they are told, how they should be and what is the right way to be a woman and uh, that was the reason why i wanted to design the whole look of the film very uh something that you would consider very feminine kind of uh, we see the world that the mother who is an influencer she has controlled her whole family to show her view of perfect happiness so they are lovely pastel colors and a lot of roses everywhere and there's just so many roses that it's suffocating and uh, everything's so perfect that it's almost horrifying yeah uh, which is probably the horror inside the fake perfection facade mm -hmm. that everyone has to put on you know the social media is just an example but it, it happens in a in everyday life so my question is exactly about um uh, the mixture of themes that you can find inside the movie like it partially is you know like a grieving for when the childhood ends uh, because some part of the wo a woman of a girl dies and something else is is born but is a grieving okay because it, it's like the death of someone else um, and also it's about I think uh, identity I, I've seen this a lot because there is this contrast this is this uh, fight between who we want to be and who we are, we are supposed to be so maybe maybe is it evil creating from this conscious from this fight yeah yes I, I really want to tell a story where well the girl is 
around 12 year old she's reaching puberty so she's in the end where her childhood is in a way ending and she starts questioning who i am and who i can be and what i accept from myself but what makes and this is all normal this is not horror story itself but what makes this growing up story and facing yourself horrifying and also kind of destroy destructive in our film is that the mother kind of puts pressure on the girl and doesn't want to see some sides in her uh, like sorrow or aggression or imperfection so all these kind of uh, the girl has to hide and they grow and become something horrifying <laughs> yeah it is horrifying but it's also um, a way to rebel against some rules i mean it's evil but it's it's a, it's a rebel somehow. Yes, uh, and you're right. I also wanted that in our film, uh, there is a monster, but I wanted that uh, it's not all evil. It's, it's because I think that when you, if you face uh, all sides of your character, all those, also all your imperfections, if you face your sorrows and uh, all your dark emotions, there's also comfort in it. So, and, and it's not, it's not bad. Uh, to feel bad okay right um and speaking about the monster um the the, the, the creature that we meet at some point of the, of the movie um looks like i think like it's mostly made uh not with cgi cgi but with uh practical effect prosthetics right yes it is and uh from very early on, when we started to design the look of the creature in Finland with two wonderful concept artists, I was explaining to them how I want the creature to look like. And I knew that I don't want it to be a digital character because I really want that it has physical presence and it's kind of real. So I wanted it to be an animatronic puppet, which is a puppet whose facial expressions move with a remote control. So I. I googled that who is the best animatronic designer in the world to find the best person to make it for us and uh, and Google told me that that is Gustav Hergen uh, who has been the lead animatronic designer in Star Wars and Jurassic World so uh, he got excited coming on board and uh, and collected wonderful team to make this puppet for us so basically all you see in the film uh, is what we did physically on set. There's just a couple of moments where there's some added uh, GG effect in the creature, but uh, other than that, it was uh, five puppeteers around the puppet moving the body with rods and uh, and all the facial expressions and fingers move with uh, remote controls. And it was uh, a lot of challenging work, but a, a lot of fun <laughs> to do it. Yes, yes, it looks really awesome. Um, and my first question, which is like under curiosity, um, of course, I, I guess you already watched a lot of movies that impacted you in your, you know, during your formation as a, as a director. Uh, but all I wonder if there are three movies or three uh, famous directors that had a particular influence on, on the developing of your movies that somehow ended up being present in the movie, even if it's not present actually, yeah. if you were thinking about some movies, some reference, even if not horror, doesn't have to be horror. Yeah, yeah when I was uh, designing and, and writing the film, I didn't think about references, I was actively avoid thinking about them because I wanted to make the film of my own. But of course, everything I've seen always influenced me. So you can see some influence maybe from Cronenberg films like Brood, uh, because I really liked the, the practical, the rawness, I would say, of these practical effects. And you can maybe see this as an uh, twisted version for E.T. because there's also this loving relationship with a creature and a child and something that was an eye-opener for me was The Others by Aminabar because I was always actually afraid of horror films and then I saw The Others and I realized how beautiful and dramatic story can be told through horror genre and also in that film uh, the it's quite light film and the horror lies in light and that was very fascinating 
to me, and it's also like that in in hatching. Oh yeah, was it made uh, in Finland during the 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 light season? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was actually shot uh, in Latvia, but it got quite close to Finland anyway, and it was in summertime, and uh, and luckily we had a lot sunshine every day, so that was uh, good luck for us. And then some night scenes we shot. Uh, uh, in day for night, just to get this very kind of weird, uh, bright light feeling there. Okay, okay, this is perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this uh, interview.